Earthing, grounding and lightning arrester. Three terms mostly used in all installations and these terms sometimes confuse people when they install a solar plant. Let's get into the topic. Hi, this is Shiva from Evolve Energy and in this video we are going to talk about earthing, lightning arresters and grounding. We were just going through the comments and this is mostly asked by the subscribers. So we are going to take this topic as a series. So in this first part of the video, we'll lightly touch on the definitions of all these three and then we'll see on how to calculate your earth pits and how to calculate the conductor size of the earthing and grounding and then also about the lightning arresters. So this will be the first video of the series. Earthing in a solar installation is very important. It's very crucial. Earthing is normally done for the safety of the equipment and mostly for the safety of the human being who is going to access the system. Earthing. Okay. Now we have a big solar installation and now we are expecting some leakages to happen in this solar installation. Leakages can also happen or it can even be a lightning strike because this lightning strike again comes under this term earthing. We are going to use our earth which is such a big sphere which is very neutral to take care of these leakage currents. Okay now when all the dead components, dead components which means all the non-current carrying conductors are tapped with a wire and taken to your earth pit, this is earthing. This protects the human being when he is going to touch this component when it is going to have a leakage current. Let's say you have a cable tray and this cable tray carrying a current carrying conductor is now having a small puncture on its insulation so this cable tray is actually conducting and now if you don't create a low resistance path for this cable tray to be grounded then the person who is going to touch this cable tray is going to form a conducting path for the leakage current so this is why uh, earthing is very important this cable which is taken from the dead materials when i say dead components or dead materials it means the materials which are not supposed to carry any electric current apart from the cables apart from all those uh, electric components inside your inverter or even the solar panel even the frame of the panel is a dead component because it should not carry any electric current okay this cable which is taken from this dead component of a solar installation is then taken to a earth pit okay now talking about the earth pit there are different ways to make a earth pit. We can use a plate earthing system which is not very common nowadays. There is also a pipe earthing system where a GI pipe is inserted and then rock salt and all the charcoal materials are used but then that is not very much reliable because the pipe can easily get corroded because of the salt and your soil nature. And there is a third way of doing it which is the uh, copper bonded earth rods because these rods don't easily corrode. So copper bonded earth rods give a good conduction also plus they don't corrode that easily. So most of the time in solar installation, I don't say that the other two are not useful in a solar installation but this is mostly used because of the um, sustainable nature of it. Because when you install a solar plant, it is going to last for 25 years. So this earthing rod should also last that long. So normally a copper bonded uh, steel rod is used for earthing these are three different types in the uh, earthing pit formation then you put the charcoal salt or there is chemical earthing those are all different so this is how to form a pit another important thing to um, understand is that uh, earth is a earth earth is the same earth everywhere so this one question comes to me all the time how many earth pits can i make or how much should be on the dc side and how much should be on the ac side okay now for a galvanically isolated system whether you uh, ground it on the dc or uh, ac it doesn't really matter because both are galvanically only isolated but our solar um, power systems are non-galvanically isolated so that is one main reason you have to ground the DC side as well as the AC side they both have to be grounded separately 
Grounding the AC side thinking the DC side is also grounded will not work in our system because our system is non-galvanically isolated. They don't have a physical contact between each other. So they don't have a transformer and you have to ground the DC side separately with the AC side but they both again go to the same ground that doesn't really matter because there is a perspective thinking okay you cannot ground the DC with the AC no it doesn't work that way a ground is a ground so DC pit or AC pit doesn't matter but you really have to give two pits that is simply because these two are non-galvanically isolated they don't have a physical contact secondly lightning arresters i put lightning arrester uh, in the same term as the earth thing because this is again protecting your components and the human being who is going to operate the component just in case if there is a lightning which can happen in your solar plant because it's always put on a rooftop or it is put on an open ground and it is metal surface and it is on the tallest point of a building so lightning strikes and there are other reasons as well why the solar plant can prone, can be prone to lightning attacks so this lightning arrester which is installed in your solar power plant has to be earthed it should be connected to a earth pit so now when you bring down such a big power which should be dissipated to the ground you don't rely on one pit i mean one pit is not enough to ground such a big lightning that is going to strike i mean nobody knows how big the lightning is going to be so let's assume there is a big lightning strike and then this has to be grounded so you cannot rely on one pit that's why the reason you will have to have multiple pits to ground your lightning power which is coming from the top of your roof how much and where to fix them will be taking care of this in the next part of the video but grounding a lightning arrester has to be done in many pits not relying on one single pit now this pit should not be anywhere close to the pit where you have grounded your solar inverter that is your ac side because these pits when they don't work for example if they get dried out or if they have uh, if they don't have a good conductivity then this lightning which is trying to get dissipated into the earth can actually take back the root and go back into your inverter damaging your inverter no problem with your solar panels your dc side the solar panels the solar structure can be grounded to the uh, pit or even to the same pit as the lightning arrestor you don't have any problem in that but with your solar inverter never grounded to the same pit as your lightning arrester because it can also get back into your inverter so i told you about the earth thing i have discussed about the lightning arresters now the third part which is a very small part when it comes to solar installation is the grounding part grounding is uh, mostly creating a secondary path for your electric current just in case if there is any leakage the circuit still gets closed so you have a third path which is the grounding path which is normally done on the inverter part any other uh, place you don't do it grounding is also related to earthing but grounding is something very different from earthing this is to protect your inverter basically in our system it's the inverter alone which is the electrical power carrying uh, or processing unit so grounding is done in this inverter and grounding is done uh, to protect this inverter grounding is simply a secondary path like a neutral grounding is a secondary path which is created in the system to take care of any leakage current that is going to happen in this system so that is the clear difference between a grounding and the earthing earthing is done on the dead components whereas grounding is done to take care of the inverter to take care of the operations in a inverter okay now putting all this in one plate what should be the size of the conductor how many pits should i use if i'm using more pits how much should be the distance between the pits and if there's a lightning arrester how many pits i should use for a lightning arrester all these things will be covered in part 2 of this series thanks for watching